Hello and welcome to Kia e Nero Diaries Encore on the 24th of July. Now, when I placed the order for the e Nero back in December 2018, I knew that technology was moving fast uh, in the world of electric vehicles and that um, the car, after a few years, would seem a little bit maybe old tech. But one of the most important things, of course, with electric vehicles is, is, is the battery technology, which has tended to sort of move incrementally. And if you go on YouTube, you will see all kinds of, you know, uh, YouTube channels talking about electric cars and the technology. And there's this breakthrough and that breakthrough coming, and this game changer or that game changer. And most of, the, most of this stuff, well, pretty much all of that stuff, is around technologies that are still in laboratories. They're not actually in cars at the moment. So the, you know, the great hope is around uh, solid state um, batteries, which are going to save weight and be faster to charge and be a lot safer and lighter and all this stuff. Others are talking about uh, lithium sulfur, which is supposed to have an energy density three to five times better than the current uh, chemistries that we're using. And then there's other sort of breakthroughs where they're talking about using silicon uh, instead of graphite in the anode or cathode. And there's loads of sort of research going on. But in terms of what's actually available or what's going to be available very, very soon, I, I, I tend to take more uh, interest in, you know, announcements made from the big battery companies. Now, last month, um, Catos, Contemporary Ampere, C-A-T-L, uh, the world's biggest battery company, um, they announced their new battery called the uh, Chilin. And I believe that's how you pronounce it in Chinese. It's spelled Q-I-L-I-N, but I've looked this up and it sounds like you're cheering someone called Lin. Chilin is the name of this battery. And they're going to go into volume production with this battery at the beginning of next year, 2023. And of course, they are already supplying Tesla um, with all the LFP batteries for the made in China Model 3s, and I think the Model Ys as well. Now, the consensus seems to be that LFP, certainly over the next few years, is the way to go. There's no manganese and no cobalt in that chemistry. Um, but the, <clears throat> the, the energy density with LFP is, of course, lower, but it's improving year by year. And um, contemporary amperes say that the chilling LFP version of the battery will have a pack level density of 160 watt hours per kilogram. But what does that really mean? Well, in terms of the e Nero, the e Nero battery is 67 and a half kilowatt hours. Now, only 64 of that is actually available, but its full pack size is 67 and a half um, uh, kilowatts. So that means um, that's 67 and a half thousand watt hours. The weight of the battery in the e Nero is 458 kilos. So you divide that into 67 and a half thousand watt hours and you get 147 watt hours per kilo. Now the e Nero is nickel manganese cobalt which has certainly at the, at the cell level a higher energy density than um, lithium ion phosphate but obviously technology has moved on and contemporary ampere the new Chilin battery um, is what they call a cell to pack technology and what that means is you're saving an awful lot of space within the battery and more of it is actually generating energy apparently a typical battery today and the current uh, generation of um, contemporary ampere batteries about 52 percent of the space inside the battery is actually energy producing and of course that's where we talk about volumetric density how many watt hours per litre of space as opposed to watt hours per kilogram of weight. So contemporary amperes say that the chilling battery has now pushed that up to 72%. So 
Awesome. Um, so, you know, that's a 20% improvement in the space utilization of the battery, which is probably why they're able to get to 160 watt hours per kilogram in terms of energy density. So what would that mean if an e-Nero, if my e-Nero or any of the current e-Neros were fitted with the Chilin battery LFP? Well, if we said we wanted to keep the same weight, we're quite happy with the weight of the battery, 160 watt hours per kilo means we'd have a battery that is 73 kilowatt hours, um, you know, using the same weight um, as, as, as the benchmark, as opposed to 67 and a half. But of course, I can't use all of that 67 and a half in the NMC battery. Apparently, with an LFP battery, you don't need to worry about that. You can rapid charge it to 100% time after time, and it doesn't care. So all of the 73 um, kilowatts would be, um, kilowatt hours would be usable. What would that mean for range then? Well, it would add about another 60, 65 kilometers. Bearing in mind we've got the same weight of car. Um, it's just a higher energy density battery. And that would give us comfortably over 500 kilometers of range, which is fine. I mean, to be honest, you know, people talk about you know, increased energy density is giving us longer and longer ranges. It doesn't bother me too much. What I'm more interested in is charge time. I mean, I can't drive more than 250, 300 kilometers at a sitting. And the e Nero, even in the middle of winter, into a headwind on the motorway, is comfortably 3 to 350 in range. And to be honest, you know, two hours of driving in the winter in those conditions, I need a break. Problem is, when I take that break, it's taken me 30 to 40 minutes to get a decent amount of range back into the car. Now, the chilling battery, contemporary ampere say, will go from 10% to 80% in 10 minutes. Now, I don't know what that's like in the real world and at what temperatures that would be, but if you're talking about charging speeds that are as good as the new Hyundai and Kia products that have an 800 volt system where you can comfortably put 100 kilometers back in seven or eight minutes, then that'll be just fine. I, I, I don't see any downside of that really. I mean, you know, if you're talking even a 10, 15 minute stop, that's just about enough time to use the bathroom and grab a cup of tea or coffee or whatever your particular poison is. Um, so, you know, I think this is interesting, but the chilling battery is also going to be made in a nickel manganese cobalt format. Now, obviously, they're going to be more expensive. And the general view is that in the future, NMC is really going to be more of a specialist uh, chemistry for big luxury cars, maybe for sports cars where you're space constrained, and of course, for heavy goods vehicles where you really need to pack as much energy into for a given weight that you and space that you can. Now the energy packed level density of the NMC version of the chilling battery is quoted at being 250, 255. Now again, put that into the Enero, same weight of battery, and you're talking about an effective capacity of about 110, 112 kilowatt hours, considerably bigger than the capacity that we've got in the car now. And you're talking on that basis a range of about 750 to 800 kilometers. But I really don't think that's so interesting. And lithium iron phosphate, it's much cheaper. They say 30% cheaper. The materials, phosphate and iron, are more readily available. So you're not worried about the fact that, you know, the cobalt, which is being mined in the DRC, they say, by children, although apparently that is now sort of less than 1% of all the cobalt that's mined in the DRC is what they call artisanal mining. I mean, that's awful. Nobody wants that. But it's a kind of a thing that the oil industry has been throwing at the electric car industry to say how damaging it is to the environment, as if drilling wells and shipping crude oil around the world and then spending an enormous amount of energy to refine it isn't even more damaging. Anyway, that's a bit of a rant. But the fact is that LFP batteries, they can do more charge cycles. You know, you're talking 
two and a half to three thousand full charges and discharges. And obviously, if you, as we do, charge like twenty to eighty percent, never really bother to go to hundred percent. You're talking probably five or six thousand cycles of like two hundred to fifty kilometers of additional usable range. Um, you know, th this is really the million mile battery. And the other thing with LFP, of course, is that uh, they don't, um, you know, they're, they're a much lower fire risk. Um, so it seems to me that for most vehicles going forward, you know, the ordinary kind of cars that we're going to buy, we're not going to be using NMC batteries anymore. It's going to be LFP. The incremental improvements in the energy density are going to mean that, you know, it's going to be perfectly fine for most people's use. You're going to have, like, with the e-Nero today, four to 500 kilometers of range, um, but you just be able to charge that much faster. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting, just a bit of sort of speculative um, thinking there around, you know, what would it be like if, uh, you know, the e-Nero had uh, not some future battery that's still in a lab, but something that's actually coming. Apparently, um, contemporary Ampere say it'll find its way into vehicles in the second quarter of uh, 2023 and the first customer almost certainly is going to be Tesla in Shanghai where they make the Model 3s and Model Ys but you know contemporary Ampere they are building factories like you wouldn't believe and they're already on track to produce 100 gigawatt hours of battery this year and that's just one company and when you consider that you only go back a couple of years and the entire world was only producing about 100 gigawatt hours of uh, batteries for electric cars. So, you know, it's all going in the right direction. It's never fast enough because we really want to stop using fossil fuels, of course. But it's happening, you know, and this is just another step in that direction. Anyway, thank you for watching. Until the next time.